Hi everyone, welcome to another Learn Grow Invest meeting. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with the CEO of Dollar Financial Services Limited, Kadeen Mears. Kadeen, welcome. Thanks, Jermaine. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you for accepting. I know that this is a busy week for you, so I'm definitely yeah. happy that you are able to join us. I, I want to ask everyone who's in the chat, let us know where you're joining from. We have you know, a great interview lined up for you here today. We want to get as many questions as we can. I know the, I know the prospectors would have shared a lot about the company, but sometimes there are questions that you may have as an investor. And this is a great opportunity to speak to the CEO of the company that you're potentially you know, going to be making an investment in. So ask your questions. There are no silly questions. If something is not clear, be sure to take the opportunity to ask now. So what we normally do here, interviews like this, we do prospectus reviews, stock reviews. We talk about different investment topics, anything that we think can provide you with value as an investor. So it's not just stocks, but you know, um, cryptocurrency is just about anything that we have the opportunity to invest in from Jamaica. All right. So we are also a Bible based investment community. So it is customary for us to open with a word of prayer. So let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this day and that we're able to see it. Lord, we pray that this will be a fruitful discussion, one that is meaningful to all. Be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, as I say, Hector is here, Dane is here, Ryan is here, Roger. Uh, please share the video. Uh, let me just introduce Kadeen a bit here, give you some, some background about him. So Mr. Kadeen Mears serve as director and chief executive office of a dollar financial services limited he also serves as director for dollar financial kayana inc a subsidiary of dollar financial jamaica limited and the chairman of equity capital management limited an associate stake shareholder of dollar financial jamaica limited mr mears has over 13 years of experience in the financial sector with six years at the executive level working with credit unions, commercial banks, investment banks, venture capital companies, and was a founding member of the former microfinance institution, M24 Investments Limited. He is, the, he is designated and a certified expert in, in microfinance by the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management in Germany. He has received a Bachelor of Science degree in business administration from the Montego Bay Community College with a major in management and has pursued a master of business administration with a major in marketing from the University of Technology, Jamaica. Thank you so much for being here again, Kadeen. Um, thanks, thanks for the introduction. Yes, yeah, so um, what we'll do for those who maybe have never heard about the offer and what, what you're bringing to market, just give us you know, a quick overview of, of what that entails. Well, just a quick um, summary. So, you know, over the past couple of years, you know, we've been consistently, well, I'll just give you a background on dollar financial first. So uh, just like our slogan says, we lend. And we kept our logo, our slogan very simple, just so that people from they see the brand, they know exactly what we do. So we're a lending company. So basically we offer, you know, financial services, well, credit our debt to uh, micro, small, medium-sized companies, and we also offer personal loans. Um, you know, we've been in operation for a while, um, since 2014. We used to offer uh, Cambio services, bill payments, and then in 2016, we kind of just changed direction for the business and decided to, you know, just stick to um, lending or microfinancing. Um, since 2016 to today, you know, we've gone through a lot of hurdles, you know, growing the business, raising capital, you know, finding our groove in terms of our structure and the company. Um, you know, last year, you know, we managed to raise um, a million U.S. in funding along with 200 million in 200 million Jamaican um, using GK as our as our broker. And that really propelled us to be in a position where we are today. Uh, we had already in place the management, the structure. All we needed was the capital at that time, which we got. And, you know, the results, you could see the results in our financial statements for last year. 
um, the start of this year, you know, after we completed our audit with PwC, you know, based on the numbers, um, we, our brokers VM came up with a valuation of around $2.5 billion. And we decided that we wanted to access more capital from the capital markets, but this time not debt, but equity. So yeah. we decided to tap the Jamaica Stock Exchange and we decided to give 20% of the company for a raise of 500 million. So that's what the offer is. And the offer opens on Friday and closes on June 10th. And the price per share is a dollar per share. So in short, that's, that's what's been going on. Yeah, yeah, excellent overview. Thank you for that. Uh, so, I mean, it's a really simple business model to understand. So you lend money, you, you have many different products which appeal to many different segments of, of customers. But in short, you're, you're lending at a, at a particular interest rate depending on the product and that's how you make money. So it's really about keeping those expenses low now to maximize profitability. Right. Okay, so in terms of the, the, the financing side, the, the interest in listing is really, you know, as you said, getting using equity instead of debt to, to finance your growth. Correct. Okay. So, okay. you know, just, just you know, as it's in the prospectus, a portion of, of the proceeds, um, the raise is for 500 million, 250 will be going to selling shareholders to clear their obligations or debt that they would have incurred in growing the business. And 250 will go back to Dollar Financial to grow the loan portfolio and to expand the business. Okay. Yes. And we we actually did the full prospectus review. So if you missed that, feel free to check that out as well. All right. So how are we going to go through the rest of this discussion? So we got some questions in advance. So I'm going to go through those with Kadi now. But as as questions come up for you, feel free to post them in the chat. We'll take as many questions as we can. We're aiming for an hour, but just in case, let's see how it goes. So the first question here that we have, uh, does the microfinance business have, um, you know, a sort of, um, what what's the cycles that you, you tend to go through throughout the year? Or, or what I'm, I'm, businesses can as, you say? As in if there is an up and down in terms of when the business might boom or not boom? Yes. So, you know, with lending, um, you know, lending is based on the industry that you lend to. And just like seasons, business go through different, you know, um, periods in which they might see growth or decline in growth. For lending, what we've done at Dollar is to diversify the portfolio. So if it's, if it's August and it's coming to back to school, you know that we're going to see a drive in loans, right? So there's going to be a demand there. Um, so if we divide it, divide a year into quarters, um, then you're going to have the Christmas time, there's going to be a spike. You know, after the Christmas period, everybody would spend off the money. So they need more loan um, to kind of, you know, have, yeah. after all of the Christmas shopping. So then there's a demand again. Um, you know, so there isn't really a downtime. And that is why it's a business that is just so, um, there's such a high demand, but very cash intensive because our inventory is actually cash yeah yeah okay cool so so yeah that makes sense so what's what's your estimated market share so you see operating two companies in in two countries jamaica and guyana what's mm -hmm. estimated market share in both countries you know this is a is a popular question that i always get asked and it's not a simple question and the yeah. reason for this is we operate in a segment mostly for the unbanked or the underbanked and based on data you know rela released whether by the boj or you know international bodies they would say that about 70 percent of the population is underbanked or not banked at all so if we're looking at and we pull statistics and we see that we have said 250,000 people paying nhd pay UIE, we know that these people have a job and they're working or they're yeah. self-employed and contributing this also means that there's about 750,000 people who are informal. So that gives you an idea of the market that is on top. If I, when I look at my competitors, they might have 20,000, 30,000 customers, right? That is probably 2% or 1% of the market wow. that is out there. So in terms of growth potential, the 
the, the possibilities are endless here in Jamaica. In Guyana, fortunately for us, we were kind of like first movers. So, you know, micro lending wasn't a popular thing there. So we went there, we introduced new products and we went in at the right time when there's this gas and oil boom. And what that allowed us to do is to offer financing solutions for entrepreneurs who are offering subservices to gas and oil um, industry related, I, you know. So, so in terms of, you know, the market share, I'd say that we haven't even scraped the surface. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I believe I heard you say that uh, your customer base is somewhere around five thousand. Correct. So, so I mean, if you if you if you look at the the formal population that are earning and an informal, plus the number of persons in the country, you're saying that five thousand is just like five thousand is less than a probably less. Yeah, many skill probably two percent. Yeah. You know, so if, if we target 20,000, is a significant growth and also a significant capital. Yeah. Um, I think I think Jamfin released some data in 2020 that stated that about $20 million is in circulation in credit. And that's from, you know, the micro micro com, microfinance companies. And these are companies that would have been reporting because yeah. there's still a lot of companies that aren't reporting. I mean, that's that that, that's another reporting. conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Hector, let me actually take one from the audience. Hector is, is asking, is franchising an option in your expansion plan? Um, no, it's very hard, especially coming up with the Microcredit Act. It's very difficult to, you know, franchise a business that is regulated because it takes a lot of compliance and, you know, the governance structure that's around that. So, I mean, um, no plans for um, franchising the brand. Okay, okay, but but there are plans for 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 acquisitions. I think the pro, the prospect just mentioned it, but it didn't say what prospects there were for acquisition. It just mentions expansion. Correct. Okay. Anything that we will see in this year? <laughs> well, okay. um, there there aren't any things that we are focusing on right now, but we are anticipating just like everybody else. You know, come July when the act is fully enforced that there's going to be some consolidation in the market and there's going to be some mergers acquisitions some buyouts you know so we're here to see you know how that plays out okay so maybe q3 q4 we may hear of potential opportunities possibly okay 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 all right uh, paper plate is asking with with inflation Ticking up an interest rate will increase. How how will that potentially impact the company in the short term? I mean, inflation, um, inflation, interest rate raise um, that that will affect us individually as persons. It will affect our customers because if it, it will reduce our debt servicing ratio because you know inflation will basically take a portion of what we could have used to to, to service our debt in the past. No, in terms of the banks raising their interest rate, that might be a good thing for microfinance companies because our, our interest rates had already priced in the risk of, um, you know, interest rate rise. So we won't be raising our interest rates any, any, anymore because it but was it, already it, priced it, in. It, it would make you seem more attractive than if it would the banks correct. Are okay. correct, because if banks raise their rates and, you know, they have more bureaucracy or, or red tape, um, you know, persons might decide to just come to Dollar Financial instead of going to a commercial bank because our turnaround would be less, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, our requirements might be less as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Matthew, I think this is Matthew's favorite question to ask for every single interview that we do. Uh, Matthew says, would you consider a rights issue in the future? Well, Matthew, just consider me as an operator of a business. I focus on driving growth at a company, and then I let my board and my, 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 my investment bankers decide, you know, should we do a rights issue? You know, um, I guess a rights issue br brings the tool of capital. Um, so at some point, if capital is needed, it's either debt or equity. Rights issue is an option, could raise debt. So, I mean, depending on where we are and what, what's the best fit, um, we will consider whether it's debt or equity in the future. But right now, we're just poised for growth, so we're not. We're, we're, that's not in our forefront right now. 
Okay. Uh, no, knowing Matthew, and, and hopefully Matthew is okay with me saying this, I think he just wants to know if you're open to the idea. We're open to the idea of everything. <laughs> okay, Matthew, I, I, ho I hope that helps. His next question is, would you consider a bond on the JSC? Um, so, as I said before, this is a capital-intensive business. Greater demand is the greater need for cash for us to have to unlearn. If at some point, you know, our portfolio is close to a billion dollars now. If we raise 250 million in equity and we unlend that and we need more capital to unlend based on the supply, then we would have to tap the cap markets again. If a bond is is suitable and it's at a good price, then definitely, you know, would leverage um, that form of debt to, um, to, un to further unlend and grow the business. So, so pretty much the more the business grows, the more you need capital, the more you need capital, you likely, you know, explore those options when, when the time comes. All right. Okay. All right. Question from Omar Simpson. I know microfinance offers risky loans because of the fact that you guys give loan, because of the fact that you give loans to persons who can't get it from the bank. How do you secure those loans and what is the rate of bad debt? Um, so we offer, you know, in loan business, you have unsecured loans and secured loans. Um, you know, based on the the, the risk, um, we might ask for collateral. Based on the size of the loan, we might ask for collateral. Um, and there are cases that we might not ask for collateral. So um, it just depends on the situation of the customer um, that will determine what the requirements would look like. Um, so in terms of what we use to secure loans, you know, I mean... We use property, um, we use uh, motor vehicle, your typical stuff, and we, we can get very unorthodox as well. Um, in terms of the bad, bad, the, the bad debt rate, you know, we're, we're currently single digits. You know, in the prospectus, it showed that when COVID hit, we were at about 12, 13 percent. Um, mm -hmm. So we are back to single digits. So now we're back at, you know, uh, five, six percent. Yeah, I believe the prospector showed five percent. Again, that's, that's, that's in the prospectus review that we did, so you guys can check out that video if you haven't seen it as yet. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions, which is very good, so I'll, I'll skip mine for now and just focus on the chat. Bobby is asking, how would the company finance potential acquisitions? I think he almost answered that part already. Um, I guess it would kind of depend on the capital, what, what the cost or, would be. Or the size of the company that we're acquiring, you know. All right, Bobby, hopefully you'd have gotten that response already. Hector is asking what percentage of your customers are recurring or returning borrowers? Um, I would say on average, um, we see a customer returning um, or taking at least three loans with us. So that's the average like life, life cycle of a customer, um, you know, which is kind of good because by the third loan, an entrepreneur is probably in a position to a uh, better cash flow position. Um, yeah. So I'd say an average recurring rate of three, three, three loans okay. per customer. Is is there maybe an average loan size? Is it because because there you do have a group of high net worth clients? I, I figure we can't just divide your total loans by the five thousand. No, so no. So so our average loan size outside of that would be at about one hundred and fifty to two two hundred thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. Matthew is asking, do you guys plan to, to, to partner with medical associates? I noticed that you have MediP and medical associates is being sold currently. Well, that's not affiliated with Dollar in terms of the sale of medical associates, but our MediP product, we do have partnerships with, you know, orthodontists and, um, and other doctors that offer, you know, cosmetic surgeries um our cosmetic operations um so we do have partnerships currently for the medipay okay i think he has a follow-up question to that what are some of the most popular purchases customers make with the medipay loans i'd say um orthodontist um braces okay okay all right paper plate is asking how regulated is the micro lending compared to traditional banks that's i think you get into the question i don't think it's yeah well i mean i'll answer it as best as i can i mean we're not regulated yet 
um, but we are in the process of being regulated. Um, I'd say that, you know, commercial banks are to under a total different regime because they're a deposit taking institution. We're not, um, we're unlending our own capital. So it's two different, um, two different ways of managing the two different sectors. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. And it, it would be good paper plate to check out the Microcredit Act for 2021. We actually shared it in the Telegram group. So check that out if you're interested to see what's in it. Chantel is asking, how does Dollar plan to deal with this incoming recession to mitigate its effects and which of your assets, uh, which of your assets and plans are likely to be affected the most? Um, I mean, I, this is my personal opinion, but I think the pandemic was worse than any recession um and um a pandemic is once every 100 years and a recession is what once every 10 years um so i mean after going through you know covid and understanding you know how to diversify our portfolio to mitigate against um possible risk we have so far you know as as you said um you can see that we have a lot of secured loans on the books and we have a lot of you know salary dedu deducted loans um so we have minimum exposure you know and we have some form of recovery that can take place in the event of any anything catastrophic okay i mean i think i think the thing that i'd probably say here is that based on the type of industry even in a recession there will be i mean though though the process to lend may not be the same there'll still be opportunities to lend um even Correct. more so session there's probably greater risk but there'll still be opportunities um all right next question is from matthew is medical tourism financing an area that you guys want to focus on in the future um well from my understanding of medical tourism um, um I, I i understand it to be you know foreigners coming into a country and they will do their operation or their their, their whatever it is medical and then they would stay and then they would leave um i might have to think about a product for that in the future but I, i'm not sure that we would want to finance people that are gonna leave in a couple of months <laughs> after we finance yeah, them it it, it it may be hard to, to to track them down if it is that they they the default in any way yeah all right robert is asking can loans be accessed online without going into a dollar branch correct you can go on our website, fill out the application, um, upload your, you know, your pay slips or your, your business documents and, and your KYC, and it goes straight to our credit department. They'll make contact and assessment can be done and you can know if you're approved or not. Okay, great. Matthew is asking, what do you guys define as high net worth clients? I had that question as well in my head. Like, what, <laughs> how, how much net worth do you need to have to qualify for a dollar elite loan? No, no, no. It's not about having the. It's just a categorization, you know. You know, when you have micro businesses, um, you'd have small, medium businesses. Um, put it this way: if a, if a person has um, excess amount of collateral that can be used to um, tap some form of liquidity, um, then we would place them in this category because they would be they would be categorized as low risk, not in the sense of their ability to repay but in the sense of, you know, the collateral being used to secure the loan. Okay, so 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 it could mean that, let's say I don't necessarily earn a lot of money, but I have maybe assets that maybe have been passed on to me or in my name that I can now borrow some something greater than what I'm taking in per month because there are assets to, to back up that right. loan. So, 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 so you probably have an asset and there's a business opportunity. Um, and you can bring that business plan to us with your projections and your plan. And you say that, you know, I, I want I want four million Jamaican dollars to borrow. And, you know, I have this property, it's worth $15 million. All right, I have, I have a car for $10 million. I don't have a job now, but I have this great idea. And we might fund that, um, fund that business. So on the basis of, you know, projected cash flow, as well as um, the business plan and the collateral. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Lowlin is asking if you do car loans. No, we don't do car loans and we try not to compete with the commercial banks. We're in a space. 
and and there's a niche and we kind of stick to that okay okay Imran is asking, are you guys looking to offer loans to tertiary students or students interested in the work and travel programs? Um, I'd say Imran, one of the first loans that um, when I just started, when I was 24 um, and I borrowed money to start the business, one of the first loans I gave out was to one of my friends who got through for college in Canada um, and he never had any money for his rent and everything. And I, and I gave him a loan back then and and that loan really put him in a good position when he was in Canada. To this day, he still reminds me of that small loan. So we do consider, you know, um, different situations like that where Jamaicans are seeking opportunities otherwise. Granted, we might ask for a guarantor who still lives yeah. in Jamaica. Um, okay. but there are That's lot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> leaving the country and he said, you yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. so. All right, fair enough. Khalil is asking, how do you plan to manage costs while seeking to scale the branch network of Dollar? So, so the good thing for Dollar is that our costs are pretty much frozen because we've already built our built out our management team. The only cost that we look to incur is, you know, probably new sales officers because we would have built out our underwriting department, we would have built out our collections department, we would have had a strong management team, a CFO, a CEO you know, our accounts department, HR department, all of that would have been built out already. So in terms of, of support for expansion, that, that's already in place. Okay. Okay, great. And I think that leads me to one of the questions that I had in terms of um, your, your locations. So you, you shared a map of the, the locations that you currently have. How, mm -hmm. how aggressive are you at expanding to the parishes that you're not currently in? Well, I mean, we're so experienced at this point in building out a branch. We literally, once we find a location, we can build out a branch in probably over a weekend, right? Um, the, the truth is what's more important to us is finding the operator for each location, finding that, that proper human capital, that proper person who has the skill set to help us manage a location um, for wherever we look to go. So it's more than just finding the spot, finding the locations, finding the people as well. Um, so we're definitely looking to be very aggressive over the next six months after June. Um, so by the end of the year, we should we should see some branches being opened. Okay, okay. I was going to ask you as well. Any does I mean? Well, I know I know you said you're you're not currently regulated, but is there opportunity to run the business? maybe remotely, right? What if there are parishes that maybe you want to operate in, but you don't necessarily want to open a physical branch? It, it, are you allowed to do that or you need to have a physical location if you want mm -hmm. to kind of- No, you're, you're, you're definitely allowed to take your applications online. Um, the, mm -hmm. the, the regulation does not prevent you from doing that once you have a money lending license. Um, but we do value relationships a lot and we like the human feel that comes with that branch. Um, you know, like, for example, in Lucy, Hanover, um, we were there and we've seen commercial banks close down and, you know, the people in the community are like, are we being left behind? So when we as Dollar, we're still there to support their growth. It really means a lot to them. So we still believe a bit in terms of the brick and mortar. We might not have a big staff branch, but the presence in the communities are very important to us. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, next question is from Daniel. What percentage of secured loans utilize unorthodox types of collateral? Um, those those types of collaterals are like one-off. Most times they're short-term. Majority of our secured loans now are real estate and motor vehicles. Okay. So in terms of the, the motor, is it that you do a... a a certain percentage of the value of that that asset yeah so the rule of thumb that we use is that um we give you 50 percent of the value of the asset okay so if the car is valued two million dollars we can give you a million dollars to borrow if the property is valued 10 million dollars we can give you five million dollars to borrow that allows us a little margin to in terms of you know the interest Perfect. or the expense okay okay or in the event okay. of reposit evaluation of that okay all right all right, Michael is asking, do you do startup loans? Yeah, we do startup loans, as I mentioned before, but, you know, 
There's a saying that um, nine out of 10 startups fail. So we have to keep <laughs> that in mind. Um, I don't think that there's anybody out there that has more, more companies registered and closed that company's office than me. So I know best on how, how many companies you might have to go through to find that one successful one. Um, so we do look at startups. We might, we might ask a collateral or we might ask you to get a guarantor depending on the type of startup, or you might come to a startup that's come with a startup. That's a straight winner. You have your, 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 you have, um, suppliers that you can, um, supply to There are people that you can supply a product to right away. You just need to buy the goods. We might just look at that, do some form of invoice financing. So depends on the type of startup. Okay, cool. All right. Um, not sure if other they asked, but uh, Miles, I'll ask you to rephrase that question. I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm reading it the wrong way. So I'll ask you to rephrase that. Andre is asking, what are the plans in place to handle the many possible new clients from this IPO exposure? Well, um, <laughs> it's a very good question. We might have to do another raise. Because if we <laughs> if we unlend the two hundred and fifty million dollars in a month, then we need some more capital, right? So, so I mean, we're we're anticipating the the, the marketing outside of the IPO, the marketing that dollar got from the just you know putting out the prospectus has been very overwhelming, and and the brand presence has been felt. So, um, we're we're just waiting to see what it will be like, you know, post IPO. Okay. Okay. All right, um, let me see a whole lot of questions, which I'm very, very happy to see. Um, you are. Yeah, man, definitely happy. Uh, Matthew is asking, what parish do you do most of your business in currently? It's actually Westmoreland. Okay. All right. Um, well, Paper Blade says he didn't see our prospectus video, but he's asking if you're, if you're profitable. What a question. We made a whopping $167 million profit before tax last year. For the first quarter of this year, unaudited, we made $60 million. So, I mean, compared to our competitors, I think that's pretty impressive. Okay. All right. Uh, Imran is saying that St. Thomas looks poised for growth. Why not penetrate that market next? Well, Imran, that might just be another location that we're looking to tap into. Okay. Andre is saying, is there a standard agent training plan to maintain your standards as you expand? Uh, for sure. At, this comes in, this comes into, this, this is hand in hand with the structure. Once the structure is in place, um, we'll be able to manage the growth and, and ensure that, you know, quality service remains. King Papi is saying, as inflation continues to rise and disposable income continues to fall, how does dollar plan to manage the risk of potential increasing the falls and still grow? I think we kind of answered that question before. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so. so King Papi, check, check out maybe 20 minutes ago. So finish watching the video and then go back about 20 minutes from our current point and then you'll see the answer to that question. All right, Chantal is... Um, saying from the expansion for more branches is that planning to see or to use virtual workspace to save on the cost of real estate for certain processes of the lending um, of the credit loan process i think that is um yeah well good question chantel and um you know as i mentioned before with the structure um, we actually have a centralized um credit or underwriting department um so it's not like each branch has to do their own underwriting. Underwriting is centralized, you know, HR is centralized. So we have a centralized type of structure. Um, so each branch more forms as a, a sale outlet for loans um, rather than, you know, doing actual loan processing there. Okay, okay. All right, Michael, so we answered a question about startup loans already. Um, so please check back the video. Essentially, what he said was that it depends on the business. It's open to it. So business has to be viable for them to consider it. Um, Andrew, question about acquisition. It's mentioned before that waiting to see 
what happens after July 2022. So if anything is announced, it will be later on this year. Um, will dollar be in Clarendon? I think that we've kind of answered that one already. Um, it really depends on what opportunity looks like. Mikkel is 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 asking if upsizing for the current offer is an, is is a possibility. I think that based on the JC rules, you know, I think we've already maxed out. Yeah. Um, I think this is this is definitely the largest um, junior market listing um, because the the most that you can raise on a junior market is five hundred million, and we are at exactly five hundred yeah. million. All right, um, LMD and STEM Academy is asking, what was the $1 million US that you got last year used for? We actually, we actually redirected that capital to Guyana. So most of that money was used to grow the loan portfolio in Guyana. Okay. And that was, that was established in August 2021, you mentioned, right? Right. Okay. September. Right. Yeah. Um, ETL Beats is asking, how has Dollar Guyana done since establishment? Have people received it well so far? Yeah, I mean, just to share the experience with you guys, it was was very, you know, receptive. Um, we literally, when we opened shop, um, there, there were lines, literally, there were lines outside. Um, when I was walking in, I had to be, you know, like part in the Red Sea to get into into the branch um, because you know there there wasn't there isn't much um, microfinance companies or services for credit like ours down there so people were very happy that they you know we opened um, within the first couple of months we were able to break even and and to get into a profitable position before the end of 2021 so that was that was a good a good run for us. Yeah. And and I, I believe your prospectus says only about two percent of your income is really from Guyana, so there's opportunity Correct. to grow it. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, Matthew is asking, will he be buying shares on the market after listing? <laughs> I don't know. I have to check. Um, to, I think today is uh, the twenty fifth. It depends if my salary hits my account. <laughs> All right. Um, Shamar is asking, is your organization looking for new, new employees? We're always looking for talent. So feel free to send in your resume. Um, you, you can submit it from our website as well. Okay. All right. So Paper Plate said to his previous question about um, profitability impressive. What's the average time? from when an application is received to a decision is made. I think that's a loan process he's, he's referring yeah. to there. Um, it, the, the truth is, depending, you know, we spoke about, you know, the, the loan cycle of the customers. If it's a repeat customer, that customer can get that loan within hours, an hour, two hour, because they would have submitted all of their KYC, would have understood their business already, probably done a site visit of their business in the past. Um, so if it's a new loan application and um, we need to come and, you know, see a business or see your operation, this is for business loans, of course, this might take three to five working days, but once you're in the system, it, it takes less time. Once you have a good credit history with us, it even takes less time. So in terms of salary deducted loans, if you work for a company, you have a nine to five, if your company already has a salary deduction arrangement with us, um, you can get that money same day or next day. Okay. All right. King Papi is asking, does Dollar do developer financing? Um, we don't do de developer financing, but what we can do is bridge financing. So if you're a developer and you just need a short-term loan, probably a month or two months before your, um, until you get the cash flow, then we can help. Okay. Khalil is asking, do you have plans to lend to lend any other currencies other than JMD or Guyanese dollar? Um, I think whatever territory that we decide to go in, if we enter into another country, we'll be lending in the currency of that country. In terms of currency, currency being lent in Jamaica, other currencies, no. Okay, okay. Ganesh is asking, how long has this listing been in the works? 
Um, well, my intention to list are I've been working towards this goal, I'd say, since um, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'd say about six years I've been putting in the work to get to this point. And the last, the last six months have really been a sprint um, to really get to this point. Okay, okay. All right, Matthew is asking, do you guys plan to partner with more businesses like what you did with DTL, offering loans to their workers? We, we actually have relationships, exist, existing relationships, um, strategic relationships with employers um, who would have given us access to their employees, you know, um, you know to offer um, credit services um, to, their, to their customers. Um, Dermon Trading is, is just a special case uh, based on our relationship with them. I mean, they're a conglomerate. They have, you know, Jamaica fragrances, they have select groceries, they have Woodcats, they have some Paris. So they're just like a little private equity company, really. You know, they just, you just saw they did an, an acquisition recently. Um, so they, they, they are a regional company. So the good thing with them is if they're expanding in Suriname, we can expand with them, you know. So it's just a good strategic relationship that benefits both of us. All right, good stuff. Uh, Imran is asking, will your relationship with your parent company, First Rock, influence a location in Cayman? No. Um, what influences a location is just a demand for, you know, credit. Um, so, I mean, once there's a demand anywhere and we're able to set up and get a license there, we'll consider it. Okay, great. Hector is asking, do you have plans for expansion in the wider Caribbean? Well, in short, we've, we've positioned ourselves as a regional company. Um, so, um, we started with Guyana, we've explored, explored Haiti in the past. Um, so, wherever the opportunity comes again. Um, once the capital is there, we will expand. Okay, okay. And Matthew is saying that you guys should give a loan to David Rhodes to start a proofreading. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. That's a good one. Right. Halil is saying, any plans for dollar collaborating with large employers such as GOJ, GK, or ATL? Um, we do have relationships with um these companies like ATL and um some of these companies. Um, but what we try to do um is really to stick to our niche. We don't want to get into a space where we're competing with a commercial bank for the same customers, um, and then we end up com com competing with their rates, and then we get drawn into a different segment of the market that we didn't start off with. You know. Okay. Okay. All right, Tiffany is asking who qualifies as key partner. So this, um, it would be good if you could explain the difference. So there are three pools for, for the IPO. So key partners, um, let me actually see if I can bring it up. But if you could go the, definitions, the definitions are actually um, in, the, um, in, the, in the prospectus. I think it's in the first couple of pages. Um, but I mean, the names speak for themselves. Let me see if I can bring that up. Um, so she's asking about specifically key partners. Let me share the screen here. We'll cover this in, in the prospectus for you as well. Just bear that in mind. <laughs> so key partners here says means key stakeholders of the company as determined by its directors, inclusive of its customers and suppliers who are determined as integral to the long-term success of the company, being persons presently assisting the company with developing its business and achieving its commercial objective, including VM Wealth as lead broker and its managed portfolios, as well as other selling agents and those with whom the company intends to collaborate in the future for such purposes. All right, that's on page page 10. All right, so feel free to check that out. All right, let me see the next one. Um, ETL is asking, where do you see the company in 10 years? I see it as a global company. 
I always, I, I always say, um, you know, depending uh, based on what we, the work that we see Elon Musk and these guys putting in, if we can open a branch on the moon, we'll be having a location on the moon. So I don't know where we'll be in 10 years, but wherever we are in 10 years, Dollar will be there still. Great, great. All right, Chantal. Um, Chantal, hopefully I've been pronouncing your name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, which other CARICOM islands are you planning to expand to and when is this projected to happen? I think we've asked this question in another forum already. Mm -hmm. So let me just move to the next one. Um, Paul is asking, if, is there a penalty for repaying a loan early? No, no penalty. Paper plate is asking what's what's the average payback time on the average loan? I'd say nine months. Nine months is the average tenure. Okay, and I think you said the average amount was between one fifty to two hundred. Two hundred thousand, correct. All right, Justin C, how does dollar perform in relation to its competitors <clears throat> in the space? Example LASF. Um, I mean, in terms of well, it depends on what you want us to compare 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 with our competitors um whether it's you know efficiency ratio or return on assets um you know net profit margins in most cases you know we are for example net profit margins when you look at last lasco and isp and all of them um you'll see that you know we are leading in terms of um in terms of our net profits margin compared to our loan book or compared to our revenues um as i stated before in terms of our net profit recently um so i mean the analysts can do a better um explanation for that but i won't get into it because i don't want to be talking about you know the competitors too much but in terms of our efficiency ratio return on assets you know our loan portfolio growth you know the results that you're seeing in the prospectus it speaks for itself and even you know the valuation of the company currently Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Justin C is asking as well, any plans to diversify from loans? I mean, we get this question all the time. Um, if we plan to diversify from loans and, you know, the truth is, you know, we're a financial company and, uh, you know, the fundamentals of finance is either debt or equity. We're in the debt space and how it works is that we don't need to go into real estate to be in real estate. Because when we finance um, a project or we do any form of financing in that industry, we're actually in that space. You know, when we help somebody, you know, to, to bridge uh, purchasing a, a bus for, you know, Juta, we're in tourism. You know, when we help somebody to build out a car center, we're in BPO. So that's how you look at diversification when it comes to debt. So that's how you have to view it, you know. So we, what we do is try to stay diversified in terms of the industry and the penetration that for each industry. Okay. Okay. All right. Imran is asking, any interest in private equity investing or having an investment arm? I think that was asked before. Yeah. But, um, so check out the start of the video. I think that's one of the first questions that we answered. Um, all right, these aren't questions, these are comments. So let me get to the questions I, I have because we have about 12 minutes to go. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to post them here. I suspect if we don't get all of them answered, Kadeen has actually joined us in our Telegram group. <laughs> I'm sure we can answer some more questions there afterwards as well. All right, so um, I'm just doing a scan through here because most of these would have answered already. Uh, someone asks, is there is there currently or will there be a loan consolidation offering from from dollar uh you know customers would come to us for a loan consolidation and when we sit with a customer because we practice prudent lending we'll sit with a customer and determine if our loan is right for them if you're coming in and your loan rates uh, for all your loans um are, are a mix of your loans are commercial bank credit union loans and the rates might be a bit lower than ours, we encourage you to consolidate those loans with a commercial bank at a lower interest rate because it wouldn't be prudent to, co to consolidate a loan at a higher uh, you know, um, interest rate just because you need a lower payment. Um, so it's all about the assessment at the end of the day. 
but loan consolidation most times is not something that we practice um you know as a company Okay, okay. Most of our loans is for growth. So, you know, we will, we, 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 when we hear the purpose. And I'm not sure if I lost the name. One second. Guys, I think we might have lost Kadeen. I'm not hearing him. I'm not sure if anybody else is. I'm moving for a sec. All right, I think we might have lost Kadeen temporarily. Let's just give it a minute. Yep, all right. So I think he's reconnecting. All right, guys, keep the questions coming. Uh, we have about 10 minutes, so I think we've covered a lot of questions. Thank you guys for turning out like this. Really, really appreciate it. You know what I'm going to ask you, right? Please like the video. <laughs> it will greatly help our channel. If you have not checked out the prospectus, before you, before you make a decision to invest, you want to check out the prospectus. Be sure you understand the company that you're going to potentially invest in and be sure to speak with your licensed financial advisor before you make any investment decisions right so uh, let's give him a minute or two to get back could just be that he needs to reconnect so let's just see here all right so let me just um while we're waiting i'll just share with you um, let me see so just bring up my slide on some of the things that we talked about so the company's dividend policy, they are planning to pay up to 50% of net profit in, in dividends. So that's something, of course, that will be subjected to how, how the company performs or the decisions that they need to make. All right, I think Kadeen is back. Uh, hey, Kadeen. Yeah, I, I definitely think my internet went down. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens yeah, all the time. It happens all the time, so... That's, that's the thing with going live. All right, so yeah. I think you were answering, I don't remember the question you were answering. Let me try and find it here. Um, Was it about the consolidation? Yes. I had yes. to answer that one, All right? Yeah, so basically we're saying that, you know, once we make an assessment and help the customer identify if it's the consolidation is good for them, then we will consider it. But it's not a popular product that we offer. Okay. All right. Um, all right, Khalil is saying, great session. Excellent job to the CEO and all the members of the board in the house. Uh, Paul, Paul is asking, do you categorize interest rates, example, for civil servants? Do they get a certain certain percentage? Um, no. So if you look at majority of our loan portfolios, it's either micro, small, SME, medium size. Um, so we kind of focus. That's our niche, right? So as I said before, you know, when you have the commercial banks, you know, focus on, focusing on lending, you know, police officers, nurses, you know, um, we kind of, we, we, we don't, we try not to compete with them, you know, so um, we, we stick to different segments of the market. All right, uh, Shamar is asking, what advice would you provide to a young person wishing to start a business as a young entrepreneur? I'd say, you know, to be very honest, get a job. It's entrepreneurship. It's not an easy road, you know. Oh, <laughs> but I, if you're I, if you're I, willing, yeah. <laughs> if you're willing um, to take on a long journey. Um, that's full of roadblocks and challenges and, uh, you know, feel like giving up a lot of times, um, then you will be rewarded in the end, but it takes a lot of strength, you know, to see a business through. So, um, you know, I always, I'll, I'll always, en you know, encourage entrepreneurship because what a lot of people don't understand that when you become an entrepreneur, you no longer work for yourself. You don't work for yourself and you work longer than nine to five, you know? 
um, I know you're working for everybody, you know, so, um, you know, once, once it's what you really want, you can't want to be an entrepreneur because, you know, you don't want to work for anybody. You know, you can't want to work for being an entrepreneur because you want to have more time. Um, if those are the reasons that you want to be an entrepreneur, I'd say, you know, you know, get a, get a job on Upwork, you know, yeah, or, uh, you know, where you can travel and work. That's, that's always a misunderstanding, right? You think you'll have more time. You think you'll have uh, more more flexibility. You can get there, but it's likely not going to start out that way. Correct. All right. Um, all right. So Fabian is asking, is there any preference for dollar customers re-getting any IPO allotment outside of what the offer is to the general public? Um, I'd say not at this stage. Um, so, you know, this list would have had to be prepared from before um, in the key partners. Um, so any key partners that would have wanted to participate, um, they would have had to be a part of that list from before. So um, outside of that, the general... The, the general for the publication of the prospectus, you mean? Um, Pretty much what happens is that, um, you know, we would prepare a list of who we consider to be key partners. Because you would know, for example, that this, you know, this company had helped us in our growth in Guyana. Um, yeah. So we would have put that person on a list and then, um, you know, post, pros post, you know, post um, putting out the prospectus, you know, we'll see if that person is interested in taking up um, the offer. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Matthew is saying he wished that you had shown some projections in the prospectus. I must say that that was one of my wishes as well, that you would have shown a projection or at least something maybe for the next year to three years would help. Um, he's saying he's, he doubts that you'll make less than 300 million net profit. Um, I don't know if you're, you're allowed to speak to that. I don't know if that's one thing you're allowed to speak to. Yeah, I mean, based on, you know, given that we had five years, you know, financial statements, it wasn't necessary for us to have in, you know, the projections and stuff like that. Um, that would be more of a, you know, of a startup or or a company that doesn't have enough track record to show mm -hmm. our financial statements. So, um, but I mean, based on the history, historical performance and where we are now and the current run rate, I guess that's how he came up with that number. Um, so I guess leaving a little bit in the bag is good, you know, in terms of not putting out everything. Okay. Okay. Paper plate is saying it seems first rock is fundamental in the company structure. Can you speak, uh, speak a little bit about that relationship? Well, first rock is the majority shareholder. Um, so outside of myself being at 75 before IP, um, 25 before IPO first rock is at 75. Um, so Equity Capital, um, which is also an investment management company, they own 25%, uh, which I'm a principal of, and um, First Rock has 75. Um, so in terms of their role in the company, you know, as majority, you know, they ensure that, you know, I, as the CEO, I have the tools that I need to execute. Um, so if, if there's a need for capital or any form of support from a board level, then that's where you know first rock or the board of directors will come in um and by extension you know um, first rock as as the majority shareholder okay all right all right malik is malik is saying great stuff um michael is saying great session paul is asking if it's too late to get a loan to buy some dollar shares um I mean, based on based on what Kadeen said in terms of how quick it is to process, I guess if you're interested, you're just gonna have to apply and see if you have all all other requirements. Um, Tucson is saying, how do you know what pool to apply for? Well, you'd apply in the general pool if you have not been notified that you're a part of a different pool. Okay. Okay. All right, and I think Mikhail is telling Paul that he can always seek out a loan after the IPO to buy more shares after you've listed. All right, guys, are there any more questions? We have just a couple more minutes. I'm also, you know, seeing that we're just at about eight subscribers from 5,000, but I don't know if we're going to make it before the end of this video. 
Yeah. All right, I think that's all of the questions. Is there anything that maybe you want to say in closing, you know, Kadeen? Um, what so typically I like to ask um, the, the CEO, what sort of investor do they envision, you know, you know, partnering with for this type of company? So who who would be the ideal investor in a company like Dollar Financial? Um, for us, you know, we we've always dealt with retail customers, the everyday man. Um, they're, they're the ones that put us where we are today. Um, so it would be great to see where in return, you know, the everyday man can own a, a stake in Dollar Financial and, you know, watch Dollar Financial grow and generate some wealth for themselves at the same time. So in terms of the demographics, for me personally, you know, I, I encourage the retail investors to really, you know, take up on the stock. Okay. Okay. And I saw you, so... There's uh so um Kadeen also did an interview with 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 Khalila Reynolds last night on taking stock. Be sure to check that out. A lot of the questions that we took here were were outside of what you would have already answered. It's definitely worth checking that out. He's going to be at Stocks on the Rocks this Friday as well. Be sure to to check out Stocks on the Rocks on Twitter. You'll find out about the location, instructions to get there, etc. So be sure to check that out. Um, I forgot my question that I was going to ask. Um, okay, so I think that's it. So thank you so much, Kadeen. Really, really appreciate the time. I think what we'll try to do is, I mean, after some time has passed, after you've, you've mm -hmm. listed, maybe after we get a couple of more earnings reports, maybe we can have, have, a, have a walk through with you and the team. So we'll definitely be reaching out to you. Guys, he's no in our Telegram group. Ask him questions. Anything that we no have not answered here, if you're interested, be sure to, to, to ask him directly. Okay, yes, I remember now. So <laughs> one of the things that you were saying that you don't see dollar as a stock to flip, but more growth. So can you speak to that a little further here? I mean, if, 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 you know, Warren Buffett says it well, you know, you invest for the long term. You're buying a part of a business when you buy a stock, right? Um, so if you buy a part of a business, that means you believe in the business. Um, so why why buy a good business to sell it to buy another business? Why buy a good business to go search for another good business, you know? Um, so it's just fundamentals. Um, and, you know, in terms of, you know, being a dividend earner, you know, based on, you know, you know our revenues and our and our profit margin. Um, I mean, it could be a good stock to for for persons to hold on to. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really do appreciate it, um, guys. Please do like the video. It greatly, greatly helps us. Again, please speak to a licensed financial advisor, even though we had the interview. They will review the prospectus and financials. It is not an endorsement to the company. Speak to a licensed financial advisor to ensure that this particular company meets your investment objectives. We've tried to give you as much value in terms of answering the questions that you have, but it is up to you to do your own research, ask the questions that matter for you, and then make the best decision that you can with all of that information that you have. So I really appreciate it, Kadeen. We're definitely going to be speaking again soon. So we'll we catch can up. speak second quarter, I guess. Yes, <laughs> definitely. That's that's the plan, actually. All right. All right. Thanks for having me, Jermaine, and it's been been a pleasure. And, and thanks to the audience for the questions. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks to the team. Thanks to to Sherry Hat to Sherry Ann who connected us. Um, really do appreciate it, guys. I, I, I'm actually just hanging around here a little bit to see if we can just do a mini celebration of 5,000. So I kind of want to linger for us to get to 5,000. I don't know if you guys... Um, so we're at 4,999 now. Um, all right, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make it. Okay. Thank you, Chantal, for being here and watching a really, Awesome, awesome questions. I think between this one and the other two videos that we've done, I think we've we've given you a lot of information to make an informed decision. For persons who are having challenges with 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 applying, depending on the platform that you're trying, again, those are some of the questions that we answer 
in the Telegram group. So feel free to, to, to join us here to ask that question. We have an investment class coming up on June the 4th. So you want to check that out. Let me share the registration link here quickly. All right, so this is our upcoming class. This one is on biblical investing. So if you're interested, you can join us for that one. <laughs> Somebody telling me to refer subscribers, let's see. Wow, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. 5,000 subscribers. I wish that uh, Renee was here to celebrate with me. Um, really means a lot, guys. Great milestone for the community. Considering where we started, 5,000 is a big deal. Really, really appreciate it. We should have had something here to celebrate, but yeah. Thanks, thanks, Lolin. You've been a long time, you know, subscriber. Um, thanks to everyone who's who, who's been here. No matter when when you joined us, we're greatly appreciative of your support. So, yeah. All right, guys. Um, I share the Telegram link before I go. And I hear my wife in my head telling me that I need to learn how to wrap up. So, um, yeah, this is this is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm really, really excited, guys. Thank you so much. All right. So I'll see you at the meeting tomorrow. Please do join us in person, Emancipation Park, 6 o'clock if you're available. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much. I'm going to remove this last part because it won't fit into the video. But we'll, we'll be celebrating over on Telegram. So I'll see you there. Bye, everyone.